So we have a challenge coming on. I want to know if me or Jonathan can make a hundred thousand dollars by the end of the summer. We're going to play a lot of poker. We're going to play blackjack. We're going to document it all. Every single thing, even if it's a slot machine, is mostly in poker. And we're going to go to the poker series. So we have this challenge, a hundred thousand dollars if one of us can make it. It's going to be not a competition, not a battle. If he makes we're, it- We're hoping that one of us can make it. Yes, if he makes it, I'm going to be happy. If I make it, Hundred K, me and Jonathan. It starts like, today. It starts today. The last day at Tropicana. So we're going to keep posted every single week. Hundred thousand dollars to see if amateurs can make money. Check it out, guys. Take care. Absolutely not, baby. Guys, I can't believe today is literally the last day that we play at Tropicana. I received a call from a good friend from Bali. Tomorrow, they're going to dismantle the studio. So last, last day of Tropicana. It's been a ride. We've been playing there for a long time. We love the guys there. We love everybody. We love the staff. You know, they're going to close down probably this weekend. And then in six months, probably they're going to implode it. And then in years, they're going to build a new stadium. So this is amazing. This is, you know, like history in the making. And probably in three years from now, we're going to see this video and we're going to play in the poker room in the new casino over there so hopefully we have a great game absolute nice like always and then we're going to probably go to resource world or the golden nugget but um, yeah crazy times i think this weekend they close the doors so yeah let's see what happens beautiful Tropicana. This is our last night over there. Tropicana, last days. They're, last they're probably going to sell these for a long time. I would love to get one of these things. Yeah, I would love to get the, the Tropicana sign of Venice. Hey, your house is super huge. Uh-oh. Uh oh, they're all out of service. They're all out of service. Oh, yeah. This is it. We can't even. We, we can't even DJ if we wanted to. This is oh, literally God. the beginning of the end of the Tropicana guys. So it's crazy. Oh my God, I've never seen a casino like this. Should we buy one of these machines or something? How much? Today somebody called me. Tomorrow they'll be all the TV. Yeah. So. Last night. Can we get the Yeah, yeah, we should get the fake one. All right, guys, Jonathan with Absolute Nuts here. It is our last day streaming at the Tropicana because apparently baseball is kind of a big thing and they gotta knock this building down and make way for the Oakland A's who are coming to Las Vegas. I think they're still yeah. gonna be called the Las Vegas A's. Although don't quote me on that. I don't have the insider scoop. And so tonight, since I've lost like seven sessions in a row at the Tropicana, I'm like down nine or 10 sessions in a row in general. Tonight, we're gonna break that streak. We're gonna end on a positive note. Guaranteed, if not, then I guess I'm just extending the, the loop. Street, but <laughs> I feel good about tonight. We're gonna be missing this place, so we're gonna end this night on a positive note and you know, just hang out with the people that we enjoy hanging out with, enjoying playing a game that we love to play. And this is where we come together and just forget about the crappy stuff that's going on around the world in our personal lives, in our professional lives, whatever you want to call it. And we just enjoy some poker, you know, and splash around, gamble a little bit. But uh, yeah, let's do this, guys. For the first hunt of the night, it's minute seven. We literally, literally just started the stream. Nobody has buttons, probably like two buttons. As you guys know, we play the neat game or the stand-up game. In this game, as you guys know, you win a hand, you show a hand, you win a bottom. The last person with no button pays everybody. I'm in middle position after Megan open to 25. Call the villain calls 25. So I have a brilliant idea with my beautiful, beautiful nine six of diamonds to three bet to 150. I think 
if we 3 bet to 150, we take it down, we win the button, we're safe from the stand-up game, and then we can play. But my plan quickly, quickly got into trouble. After me, A just fold, and then Queen Station, in the cutoff, decides to go. I'm like, oh, shit. And then everybody else fold except the villain cow. Of course, I don't expect anything. Once one caller, the villain cow, loves, loves, loves to get involved into pots, so he decided to call. Flop is a very, very good flop for me, in my opinion. It's ace of diamonds, ace of spades, ten of diamonds. Remember, we have two diamonds, which is absolutely great. Also, we three bet, huge, so we have the better aces here. I don't think coin station or call will call me with ace king or ace queen or ace jack. Maybe ace jack, but I don't think so. I think these guys go all in with those hands. So, in my opinion, great board for me, and then I decide to down bet or to just bet $150. And coin station decides to call. So I'm like, hmm, I don't like this, but let's see what's up. Call, to my surprise, decide to fall. So now, in my opinion, beating coin station is much, much easier than call. I thought I was so, so wrong. You know, call is the one that makes the aggressive plays. Call is the one that makes like crazy shit. Coin station hasn't been here. He has seen the stream a lot. He lives in Florida. He came for the closing of the Tropicana. So I don't know. I don't remember how he played. Crypto is up. So probably that's why he did this kind of shit. So like we said in the past, he decided to call. Torn is a five spades. In my opinion, I was thinking, 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 okay, what he can have? Can he float me with any cards? I think he can. He's capable of that. So let's continue here. I didn't think I could make him fall an ace, but I think I could make him float a lot of king's eggs that he's floating me or a lot of floats that he has. So in my opinion, I was like, okay, let's bet small to try to pretend that I have like super value, like an ace king, an ace queen here. So, well, if he has an ace, like we're, we're screwed. We're hoping for a time, right? So we bet tiny. We bet $300. And then he thinks not that much and he decides to shock all in. So in my opinion, I'm like, okay, easy fold. We have like uh, nine high diamonds. He can have diamonds or he can have an ace, right? Right? Right, guys? What? He shows nine, eight of suit. Nothing. He has nothing of nothing. I probably have like a million tells after being on the stream. He's been watching from Florida. He probably knows that if I breathe three times, I have nothing. I don't know. What do you guys think? This is insane. He literally shoved for six Seven hundreds. I, I don't think I have full equity. If I have anything, I will call. Well, of course not, because I had diamond draw and I didn't call. But anyways, if I call, actually, he beat me with nine eight high. <laughs> Anyways, as you guys know, me and Jonathan have this challenge of $100,000. I'm trying to play good. I, as you guys know, I don't play poker for a living. I work super hard in my normal job. I don't have time to study, but I'm going to try my best to win this thing. Next hand. This next hand is fun for our $100,000 challenge that I have with Jonathan. As you guys know, me and Jonathan are trying to get $100,000 as non-poker professional. What is a non-poker professional mean? We have daily jobs. Jonathan is a psychiatrist. He's trying to get better the community. I have a lot of YouTube channels. We work super, super hard during the week to have fun and play poker. We love, love poker. And we're trying to see if we can win $100,000 as a player that it doesn't play poker for a living. So let's go for this hand. This hand starts super soft, mellow. Ages, the business owner, decide to open to 25. Queen Station, the crypto enthusiast, he's retired. He lives in Florida. He's chilling. He just came for the closing of the Tropicana, decides to call Pearl Jammer with four, more than $4 million in winnings, call call always call call you guys know he cannot fall any hand and i have king seven and i decide to call let's play pots let's try to win a hundred thousand dollars for you guys in the chat that play poker probably this is a fold or a raise but for me i like to call here i know how the all these people play we play a lot together remember we work hard we can only play like five or six hours three days a week so we are trying to get involved in as many hands as possible the flop is two of spades, five of clubs, seven of hearts. Amazing for me. We, in my opinion, I have the absolute nuts. I didn't realize that Carl, the villain, is on small blind. So I check and then the dealer is like, no, 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 it's not your turn. So Carl decides to dunk bet for $75. I make a silly joke like, oh, I check after he bets. And then I thought, but then, you know, we have Aegis, the business owner, we have Coin Station, and we have Pearl Jammer. So here, the only option for us is to call. We call, everybody else fold, we go to the turn. 
and what a beautiful turn. We hit our miracle, miracle turn. King in the turn, king of hearts. And Carl decides to bet. He bets $225. With Carl, we will never, never slow play. He knows that we're capable of bluffing here. He knows that we will raise any hearts. He knows that we will raise any gadgets, straight draws and stuff like that. He knows that I like to raise the turns. So for that reason, we are going to raise. We want to put as much money as possible in this position. We have never stacked the villain call in a long, long time. This is the chance. This is the time. We put $675 and he's not only snap like i literally put the 675 dollars in the middle and he couldn't say all in as fast so i thought oh shit he flopped a set or anything but we're never ever folding of course who cares you know if he has a set good for him you know i just stand up clap next hand but of course he has two five we look at each other we said i asked him how many times you want to run it i always ask he said twice he was drawing almost dead to a two or a five and we win both boards so this is good for our challenge. This is good for us. This is good mentally. We have win a lot of sessions this year. So let's go. This hand is a hand that has the signature of absolute nuts. It's a crazy, crazy hand and only happened in our amazing fun game. So we're the last day at Tropicana. Finally, Leila can play with us again. She couldn't play before, but it's the last day, so she can play with us. And she decides to straddle. And Carl, the villain that likes to play tricky games, convinced the whole table to call Leila straddle blind. Nobody look at the cards. The only one that had an option was Leila. And then guess what happened? It goes to Leila, Leila look at her cards, and she shots. This is super fun. Our dealer took advantage of all of us calling blind. Then everybody started folding. But Megan, Megan was curious, asked how much. It was $700 and Megan calls. Everybody else folds, it's up to me. And I look at pocket sixes. At this point, I'm thinking, this is so bad. Now, in retrospect, I think I should have just folded. Because Megan, by calling there, she's so strong. So, so strong. The more I think about it, the more I think that she only had aces, kings, queens, or jacks. Like the rest, she should have shoved just to protect their hands or to try to go heads up with Layla. We decide to call. We decide to gamble. It's absolute nuts night, so we decide to gamble. We may be ahead of like ace king, which I think she would shove. So probably there is not ace king here. Maybe king queen that decide to lean for 700, which I just don't think so. Maybe I was thinking also like pocket pairs, like lower poker pairs than me and higher pocket pairs like me, like sevens, eights, nines and tens at that time i was thinking that also can be king queen king 10 and all stuff that mega likes to play but the more i think my thought was extremely wrong extremely extremely wrong in my opinion i think she only have like the nuts aces kings queens or jacks she wants action she wants people to show off that's what i think that's my read now so as play we call i think it's a terrible call we just need to hit a set there is a lot of money in the pot but there is not a lot of money behind to hit a set and guess what we have our beautiful beautiful set the flop comes ace four six we hit at our amazing set at that time remember my erroneous thought process was that she can have king queen and all that stuff so megan check and i decide to check i wanted her to catch up i wanted her to have her pair or something the turn is a deuce when the deuce comes she check and i decide okay enough is enough maybe she has a weak ace maybe she had pocket fives um threes that's the only ones that i beat right now maybe do because it has a set so i don't think she will have a set and check so we shove again this thought is completely wrong but we were super ahead i don't know maybe we should have bet the flop really small and bet the turn uh the rest you know so she never falls like bet the flop like 400 dollars or 500 dollars i don't know what you guys think in the comments i really really want to know but anyways as play we hit the nuts we go all in megan thinks things thinks it's only 1200 left the pot is already 2100 plus the 25 dollars of every person so the pot is huge so that means that it's only half pot left for megan i shove she thinks things things call everybody says i have the nuts everybody was sweating my hand so everybody knew that i had the nuts and then bang a freaking jack 
the miracle two outer that Megan hit. I hit a miracle two outer, but I want my two outer to hold. You know, when you hit a two outer, when you hit a head set, please, like you wanna hold. You know, that's the most beautiful situation. There is two thousand one hundred dollars in the pot. There is a six four ace. You had pocket sixes. You have the nuts. You're thinking, oh my god, we're going to win a massive pot, an extra one thousand from Megan. But no, the poker gods were against me and decide to put a two outer. I don't know what is the percentage. Probably like four percent to in the river and Megan jump and hack the dealer. We lost a massive pot. I don't know. The poker gods like were teasing with me, giving me false hope in the flop and then just take it away from me. Broke my heart. <laughs> Sad day for Team David. I probably shouldn't play this hand, but it's okay. That's why we love absolute nuts. All right, Jonathan here. Let's take a look at this hand. It is early in the session within the first half an hour or so. I am only down about $500 and this is the first day of our road to 100K challenge. And I'm looking to, you know, get a little jump start and, and do a little better here. And I get my cards. I notice that I am heads up for the stand-up game. So myself and AJ are the only ones left who need to win a button so that we don't have to pay each and every person 25 bucks. So I'm looking down here. These are pretty, I, I like this. I'm liking these types of cards more and more. I have the Ace Five of Hearts, obviously suited. They have a lot of potential, of course, if there's an Ace, and also can still make a straight, uh, specifically the wheel with it, that would be really nice. Uh, and I also block an Ace, and I have almost $1,400. I do a pretty standard raise in this game to $60. And as expected, I get like a million callers. I, I get actually five callers specifically, 60 bucks each, so it's, $360 already before we even see the flop. And you can see David here giving a little speech, complains about his food, how it's not Wagyu and it's just regular. And David hems and haws. The table is really lively right now. And after his little speech, he finally makes the call. And Ajaz quickly calls behind him. That's not surprising. Robert calls and Layla calls. And this just, just, just look at AJ's face. Like all of a sudden he looks like a little kid. Like he is in a store and he's gonna steal this candy bar and just run out and laugh all the way home and start eating it and enjoying it. And then he's just gonna laugh at everyone chasing him. And he sees that there's like $360 in the pot already. He knows I need a button. He needs a button. That face right there, that smiling, smirking face. And he's just itching to just show his cards. And I bet he has like queen 10 offsuit or something. At the most, he has maybe like King Jack. But that face is like, I'm gonna steal this. I 100% know I'm gonna steal this. And I'm gonna show a really, you know, not so great hand. And I'm, I'm, you know, stuck with a little dilemma here. I'm already down 500 bucks. I'm thinking there's already 360 bucks in there. I know about 80% of the time, AJ here is trying to steal. He knows an opening raise is not gonna take down the pot and get him buttoned. So he's just limping in and he probably already had it in his mind that he's going to just shove. And so I make the call and the runout comes out. AJ starts saying, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? He's like, do you have a pair? And I say, no. And he says, I'm ahead then. Well, you know, that makes me think maybe he's got like a pair of deuces. Maybe he's got like an ace or something, which makes me a little bit worried. But the run out looks not so good until he asked me, what do you have? And I said, ace high. And what do you know? He says, that's good. And I'm like, yes, I get a button. I don't have to pay everyone 25 bucks each, which is like $200 total. I double up. I have almost $2,800 in front of me because he had me covered. I now have about $3,100 in my stack. Definitely something to play with and push people around. That's a good start to the session here. Let's go. Okay, Jonathan here again. It has been a very fun session. A lot of money moving around. And of course, we have one of our favorite games, the bounty hand. And as you know, seven deuce is the bounty hand. Ajaz in early position raises it to 125. Uh, there was a straddle on the button and it's folded over to me, and guess what I have? I have the seven deuce. And not only do I have the seven deuce, I have seven deuce suited. And not only are they suited, they are spades. The best suit. And I got some options here. Am I gonna raise or call? I elected to just call. Ajaz will rarely fold to a three bet. And a hundred dollar raise is, is pretty strong from him. So I just elected to call. I wanted to see what happens on the flop. John Turner, who has like eight million dollars in tournament winnings, calls right behind me. So unfortunately, I do not have position. Cal 
Cal makes a call, which isn't surprising because he still needs a button. He's heads up against someone else for the button. I believe he's heads up against Layla there. And the flop comes ace, 10, five, rainbow with a single spade. So not a whole lot of draws out there. Definitely favors a preflop razor. Ajaz almost 100% of the time would have bet an ace here. I probably should have checked just because it that board probably hit somebody and Broadway cards also have draws, but I decided to bet anyways, not too much. And of course I get two callers. However, consolation prize on the turn, I get a king of spades. So I pick up a backdoor flush draw, but there is like 0% chance. I think I can get a bluff through here. If I get called on the flop, that king just opens up more draws. If they have an ace, king, queen, jack, 10, they also pick up a gutter along with their pair, for example. Yeah, as much as I wanted to, as much as I wanted to just stay aggressive and keep betting, I decided to check, take the free card and look what happens, a jack of spades. That could be good or bad. I think a queen here would definitely pay me off. Two pair, maybe if it's aces and kings or aces and jacks may still pay me off. But I am just already thinking, not only will I win this pot, I will also get the bounty hand. I did want to get some value out of this. So I bet $450, which I think will definitely get a call from a good two pair as well as a queen and especially a set. And Ajaz just looks kind of disgusted here. He counts out his chips. I'm thinking, especially by now, please call. And he does call. I say I have a flush and he says flush is good. And I show the seven deuce and I get another $400 total because it's 50 bucks each. And let's go. Road to 100K and we are that much closer. Gotta love winning a pot with the seven deuce and getting paid off on the river because you end up winning the hand anyways. All right, Jonathan here. Here is another hand. I am feeling really good about myself during this session. I'm up a couple of grand. The money is moving around the table. People are straddling and this upcoming hand is no exception. As you know, I like my suited connectors. In fact, Megan now also likes her suited connectors. So a little bit of context. We are playing the low hand side bet game. So you can also bet that your hand is the worst hand by the end of the run out. When I say run out by the end of the river. And I announced that I am playing the low hand. After I look down and see seven, eight of hearts. I love my suited connectors. I love hearts. I know I said I love spades earlier, but I love hearts also. As long as they're suited, they're pretty and they are definitely potentially a premium hand for me. Maybe that's why I lose, but check this one out. There's a $50 straddle in middle position by Supervillain Cal. There is one call and then Robert on the button decides to play his position and raises it to $200. Uh, Robert's got about 24, 2,500 bucks in front of him. I got him covered. I have beautiful 7-8 suited. I call and we got one more caller. Ajaz decides to come along for the ride. So we have over $600 in the pot heading to the flop. I already announced the low. So I'm already thinking they probably put me on like deuce three, three, four, deuce five, three, five, things like that. And look at that flop. Perfect. Deuce four, five, two clubs and a lonely heart. I got a backdoor flush draw. I got two overs and a gutter. In my mind, I freaking flopped the nuts and I'm probably going to win the low as well. So what do I do? Just as any anyone in the right mind should do, you just donk out. Just donk right into the aggressor. Who cares? He's why I got two high cards. And what's he gonna do? So I bet about half pot, $300. And Robert looks at me and he's like, oh my gosh, you were playing the low, but you also play the low with ace king, blah, blah, blah. He makes a quick call. So I'm thinking he's got two overs. Maybe he's got a flush draw. 10 of diamonds should be a pretty safe card for me. Unfortunately, it doesn't help my hand out at all. I still have two overs and a gutter. And I decide, you know what? I'm gonna bet. I gotta bet. The pot's like over $1,200. I think $700 or so should do the trick and uh, I donk out again and Robert's thinking damn and I'm thinking please fold and he's thinking damn and I'm thinking hurry up and fold just give me the hand so I win the high and the low as well and he indeed mucks it. Six of spades comes on the river so in hindsight and you should always be results oriented I should have bet smaller so that he called and then I hit the nuts and then I bet again but sadly I just took it down on the turn which I'm happy with as well unfortunately I don't win the low hand because I have the nut straight and someone else won the low hand. But that was a nice pot, over $1,200 with a turn bluff on my second bullet there. I fired out on the flop, fired out on the turn and took it down. So pretty much everything is going right for me in this session. I'm making the, the right folds, I'm making the right bets. Fortunately for me, Robert did not play this hand very aggressively because I probably would have folded it. It turns out he had king, queen of clubs. So he flopped two overs and a flush draw. And the fact that I said I was playing the low 
probably made him not raise it on the flop or turn because normally he would knowing how Robert plays. I uh, hope play his flush draws pretty strongly, especially if he's got two overs. But yeah, everything just worked out and making more money on my way to that 100K. Let's go. Our first day of the $100,000. This is our last day in this studio. We're super sad. Last day in Bali's. Bro, what do you think about Absolute Nuts, Corey? Oh, man. It was a great time. Love having you so much. We love you guys a lot. I want to say something. Shout out to yeah, them. They help us run absolute nuts a lot of the time. Just shout out to you too. <laughs> That's not a cool Thank you very much. Bro, to $100,000. Tell us why do you have so many chips in front of you? You never do that. Wait, first of all, how much are you buying for? 25. Okay. Buying for 2000 Right now I have in front of me. 45, 46%, 48. Yeah, I have 5,015. So I'm up 3,015. So you're 3,000 the first day. You have 97. First and nine in 10 losing seconds. And now we reset the clock and we're going for 100K and that's just what we had to do, you know? I mean, it's, it's awesome, I like it. I like it, Jonathan. I'm, I'm glad for you that you're, you're 97,000 way to go. We start extremely good stacking the villain. I have never, ever stacked the villain. I was happy. I kaboom him. He was in shock. I make sure that I cover him. I grab his last, last chip. I am in Wait, for $6,000. Two orders for a 10K yeah. and one four order, and I am down only, I'm only down $400. Woohoo! $400, I'm only a hundred and four hundred thousand. Wait, a hundred? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Away from your goal. Away from my goal. I'm going to GG to play blackjack and I'm going to recover. We have a Does strategy. GG blackjack count for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it counts. <laughs> hey, we have a solid strategy with a coin station. So. Who just lost summon K today at GG. <laughs> no, 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 that wasn't today, that wasn't today, that wasn't today, that wasn't today. Hey, hey, mind your business, bro. Nobody asked you, okay? Solid strategy. Um, anyways, yeah. have a good one. Keep seeing the 100,000 challenge. We are not amateur pokers, right? We're super professionals. Uh, what do you think, John Turner, about us? We are like the best poker pros in the world. I just wanna know. Between I don't care what anybody says, you guys. I mean, I always hear that you guys are just super annoying and the worst players ever. And I don't think that's true. You're not the worst players ever. You're pretty good. You're, you're just super annoying. You're actually pretty good. You're super well, take care guys. Keep watching Absolute Nuts. Keep watching us in this amazing journey. We're going to go through WSOP. Jonathan, you're going to play tournaments in WSOP? I am. I'm going to try and play as many kill events. We're going to go through WSOP. We're going to go through everything. Take care guys. Absolute Nuts here. Bye. The last walk at the Tropicana. Most of the things are down, but there's some open. This is how the Tropicana looks. There's chances to see it alive. Unlimited cashier. This is where we come and get our money. How are you? I'm good. I lost, you? I lost um, at two outers, but I recovered. I only lost a couple. This is supposed to be 6K. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. Can you please make it 6K? And, oh, sure, uh, like, I'm, I, Bro, you should ask, right? Can you make this 6K Yeah, 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 yeah. This, yeah. this needs to be 6K. Yeah. yeah, this is the last time for us. She was the best. She will always help us. We love we, them too here at Tropicana. <laughs> we love them. I, I will miss this place for real. Oh, um, I'm super sad, but um, you know. I'll watch you guys on YouTube. Oh, thank you, bro. There thank you, you. Thank you. So, how much is it? $54.90. Okay, let's run that up to 6 k Guys, it's this is how far. we do it. <laughs> right? It's not far. Not far. Not, not far. far. Not far, not bro. Far not far. How much? 5000 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This, I, I turned $6,000 into 5,500. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.